I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Twitter at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. Before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together, because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 44 of Wise Advice, and uh, I want to open the show with uh, with an email from Ruth out of Miami. Uh, Ruth writes in and says, I've been on Weight Watchers since February 1st of 17, but I've only lost five pounds so far. I track everything, walk three miles per day, joining the gym next week. I do have one accomplishment. I am severe diabetic. Used to take 140 units of insulin daily, have been able to reduce to 80 units a day, and I'm hoping by my next appointment at the end of June, I can reduce further or get off insulin. I'm 68 years young, so didn't join for beauty, only for, only for health. I love your post on Connect, Ruth. Wow, Ruth, uh, that's, that's some great accomplishments right there. And I love what you said, that you joined for your health, because that's the reason we join, and that's the why that carries us forward. Uh, the fact that you, quote-unquote, only have lost five pounds, when's the last time you did that on accident? When's the last time you had no desire to lose weight and you just all of a sudden woke up and boom? If you've lost five pounds, you've done it deliberately. More importantly, if you've changed your eating habits to be able to reduce your insulin, and that is incredible. That is the lifestyle change that is working. Uh, so don't, don't ever discredit the fact that it's five pounds or only five pounds. Five pounds is hard work. Losing five pounds takes focus, takes dedication, takes discipline, and you've gotten it done. So, so great job on that. I'm super proud of you. I can't wait to hear when you're completely off insulin. I want to hear that email. I want to see it. So go ahead and shoot it to me when you get it. So continued great success there. Ronnie writes in, uh, says, I need some of your inspiration. I need help getting back on track. I was doing so well, measuring everything and counting points. I was almost 35 pounds down. Then my mom passed away and it's been food city at my father's house that people have brought to comfort us. I lost my diet karma. I am so mad at myself. I can already feel my pants tighter. I have not been to a gym since I'm out of town now. I'm sure 10 pounds are back on already. My routine and structure are kaput. One sentence from you might get me back on track. I want my motivation back. Ronnie. Well, um, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss, first of all. That is, uh, that is devastating, and, and I understand that. So the first and most important thing is you've got to take the time to grieve. Uh, above all else, you have to take care of you, you have to take care of your family, and the grieving process has to take priority. Now, it doesn't mean we have to find the comfort in the food, even though that, that is going to be the natural ability and that's going to be the natural tendency uh, in those scenarios, because you're right, people, our society doesn't know how to cope properly, and so we, we just assume that because we all have to eat, the food shows up uh, to make everything else in your life easier when in fact, in your scenario, it, it does make it harder. But what I want to tell you is, is just because it's there and just because you partake does not make you a failure. It does, you do not need to be mad at yourself in this journey. You need to accept the scenario that you're currently in. Do your very best under the current set of circumstances. And then when life gets back to your new normal, you refocus. You refine your discipline. You get remotivated and you, and you get back on it. But for a few days right now, you're, you're just trying to figure out what normal looks like. You're trying to figure out what your best is. And your best today can't be compared to your best three, four weeks ago. It's not even the same scenario. The variables that surround you aren't even the same. So, so I don't want you to focus on not doing your best today. I don't, I don't want you to be mad at yourself. I just simply want you to say, you know what? This is a scenario I haven't encountered before. I'm doing the best in this scenario. Now, as that scenario now becomes your new normal, then we continue to improve. We continue to do our best a little bit more, and we move forward. So once again, um, uh, you know, at 35 pounds down, you, you know how the program works. You know you can do it. You know under, under a normal set of circumstances, you have the ability to get it done. So this blip in the radar, you know, although being extremely devastating, I, I feel for you in that regard, it's temporary. And you have the ability to, to make it work. And you have the ability to move forward. 
And all it takes is just you focusing one more time and saying, I'm ready to do this. And so that's what it takes. I'm here for you. I'm here to walk this journey with you. We can get it done. Uh, Eileen writes in and says, Dear Fat Dag, I'm a lifetime member, 25 plus years, and love Weight Watchers. By the way, my username relates to the year I was born, so I'm not 60 years old quite yet, but born in 1960. I need the daily tracking and monthly meeting accountability to keep myself in line with my food choices. I love food, and using Weight Watchers Smart Points is an easy way to make sure that I eat the right amount of fruits and veggies and lean protein each day, and keep it up. I've been following your story over the past year and cheering you on with likes and comments when I check Connect a few times a week. I am glad for your success, but truly blown away by the support you are providing to our brothers in uniform. What you, are, what you are going to do for other military men and women struggling with their weight is amazing and will be life-changing for so many. The fact that they will be able to see your transma- transformation up close and personally when you deliver your talk will be such tremendous encouragement. Additionally, the letter collection drive that you are spearheading to give each service member in attendance at your talk a personal note of encouragement is so kind-spirited. We have all been in that place where we are down on ourselves in regards to our weight And kind words can lift us up so that we can be the best version of ourselves that we were meant to be. I just wanted to drop you a line to let you know that I'm cheering for you and for your brothers and sisters in uniform. May they all be the best that they can be. Thank you for your service to to our country and in your volunteer role as an inspirational cheerleader for fitness and weight management to your fellow servicemen and women. Thank you, Eileen. Well, Eileen, uh, thank you very much. and, And I'm truly honored to carry this message forward. And I've talked about it more than once. Uh, when I struggled, uh, I didn't necessarily have the support that I needed, uh, and I looked for it. I looked for it many times, and I asked many times for that support, but for some reason never found what I needed through the military support network. So the fact that I'm able to now deliver this message to that community, uh, that is a a true calling for me in a sense where uh, I just wish that resource was available to me. And so now recognizing it and getting past it, I want to be that resource because I know that it's possible. I know that I didn't have to give up, and, and very easily I could have given up, and, I, and for some reason I didn't. Uh, and, I, and I want to let people know that they don't have to give up as well and that together we can get this done. So you know, when I reached out to the Connect community and said, send in, uh, send in your letters for Operation Fat Dag, and you guys responded overwhelmingly positive. It's incredible. Uh, it made my heart warm because I know that we we get it. Uh, and so you're right. Being able to spread this message to, message to them is going to be powerful. And I will keep you updated as to the progress there. And, uh, man, it's fun to be doing this with you guys. So so thank you for that. Sherry out of Batesville, Mississippi, writes in, um, I wanted you to try to work into a part of a podcast on why people's mindset is that fruits and veggies seem to cost more at the grocery store. Therefore, they make the excuse not to buy as many of them as they do our junk or comfort foods. I have friends who see my weight loss and see me eating lots of fruits, but they continue to say, but fruit costs so much more than the other foods I'm normally purchasing, so I just can't see myself spending all the extra money on fruit. I tell them that I believe they are so used to paying for the price of normal foods that when they look at buying something different to replace those normal foods, they just see the sticker shock because they are not pricing the normal things anymore They just pick them up at a habit at the grocery store. Just wanted you to address this because so many listen to your podcast, and I believe that lots of people need to see the rationale behind buying good for us foods, no matter what our old mindset may be. Thanks, Sherry. Sherry, this is a, a, a common or a classic price versus value, right? The price tag is all relative. You know, three dollars for for this or three dollars for that. It's the same three dollars, but 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 what's the value behind it? So you know, it, it, when you sit here and you look at the comparison of fruit versus processed food, um, sure, the, there is a price differential. And I'm a firm believer that uh, even to include the actual the monthly subscription to the Weight Watchers, when I first joined, I thought it was expensive. You know, it, it irritated me to pay that. You know, forty some bucks a month or whatever it is. It irritated me to pay that. To have someone just tell me not to eat. It's something I already technically already knew. But what I realized is two things. One, the value of being in that meeting room is, is I would pay triple. And, and, and the other one is, is when I follow the plan properly, 
I spent a lot less money on food because I was eating a lot less because I was eating more healthy. So even though fruits and veggies end up costing, quote unquote, more, the value they provide and the, and the food that you're not buying out of habit outweighs each other. And, and if you were to do a true daily budget, you'd probably see that, that you're actually saving money if you stay on the plan. At least that's in my case. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I think probably one of the other, you know, considerations is the shelf life of a food. If you buy fruits and veggies, you know, they're good for about a couple days, three or four days on the shelf. Uh, you know, you buy a Twinkie, you can have that for 200 years. So a box of Twinkies can last you 200 years. Generally in my house, it lasts about a week, but you can, they can last about 200 years, right? Uh, whereas a banana won't sit on your shelf for 200 years. So there is that value proposition that we have to kind of contend with. Uh, to figure out what is something is worth it or not. And in my case, uh, fruits and vegetables absolutely are worth it because of the health benefits they provide that I can't get anywhere else. Thank you for your email. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, your your thoughts on this as well. And I think it's something we just need to address. And it's one of those, if you truly want it, the value will outweigh the price. And you'll start seeing the value and you'll start seeing the benefit that the food and the healthy food, the fruit provides, and uh, and therefore you'll continue to pay for it. And as we know, supply and demand works. The more we continue to purchase these things, uh, maybe that'll drive the price down. So always something to consider there. So Sherry, thanks for your email and, um, and congrats on your 5%. You're doing a great job. Uh, if you've lost 5%, you can lose 10%. What you're doing is working. So keep up the great work. What are you celebrating? Let's, let's get it on the air. What do you want to talk about? One of the things I want to do about this show is I want to make sure that we hit what you're talking about and, uh, and what, where do you struggle and, and where do you succeed? And, and we share that amongst the community so that we all become, become better together as we work the program together. So send in your email. Go to fatdag.com. Click on podcast. Send in your questions, your celebrations. Again, I'll work them in part of the show. You can reach me on Twitter at Wise Advice, Instagram at Wise Advice. I'm out there just about everywhere. Uh, But that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight, getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. Get to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. 